Hello, I'm Dr. C.G. Joseph, a board-certified surgeon who specializes in helping those change their lives with the help of minimally invasive bariatric surgery. Now, I believe the most important aspect of providing quality care is establishing a good relationship with my patients and involving them in the treatment plan. I'm blessed to have a dedicated team that helps patients regain a healthier lifestyle and positive outlook on their future. As you will see in this seminar, our team consists of nurses, dietitians, and administrative staff that will work with you so that you can accomplish the best outcomes possible. For many, the seemingly hopeless struggle to lose weight is finally overcome with the bariatric surgery. The surgery is rather quick and the results are often dramatic, but success is greatly impacted by your education, engagement and commitment. This video is a starting point for your success and we ask that you pay close attention so that you can be well prepared for your initial office appointment. Hi, I'm Kim, the Bariatric Nurse Navigator at Centerpoint Medical Center. My role is to help you start on the path to weight loss surgery and answer any questions along the way. I work closely with our surgeon's office and our bariatric team to ensure you are prepared and ready for surgery. Like millions of adults, you have probably struggled with your weight and the negative effects of weight-related health conditions for years. I want to assure you, you are not alone. Over 250,000 people choose to have bariatric surgery each year in the United States. While there are risks associated with bariatric surgery that must be considered, there are many other benefits besides just losing weight, such as improvement or complete resolution of their type 2 diabetes, high cholesterol, and high blood pressure, resolution of PCOS and or insulin resistance, increase in energy, reduction in joint or back pain, more positive outlook on their future. Sometimes bariatric surgery is the last resort for our patients. They have tried every fad diet that has ever existed, attempted to reduce their calories and start an exercise routine, only to find themselves back at square one with their weight, sometimes even heavier than when they began. Sound familiar? Diet and exercise alone is often not enough to overcome the disease of obesity. Contrary to what many believe, bariatric surgery is not the easy way out. It involves commitment, determination, a change in behavior and habits, but when used as a tool to its fullest potential, it can finally help those struggling with obesity produce rewarding, successful, and lasting outcomes. I've been thinking about weight loss surgery for a long time. How do I get started? By watching this seminar, you are already completing a required step in the process. Our next step is determining if your insurance policy covers bariatric surgery and what policy guidelines there are to follow. We will call your insurance company and get all of the necessary information and requirements so you'll know exactly what evaluations you'll need to complete in order to be compliant with your policy's guidelines. If your insurance company does not have bariatric surgery benefits, we do have a cash pay option we will discuss with you. After we have your insurance details or decide to move forward with a cash pay option, we'll have you complete our patient portal, which includes your health history, weight and diet history, surgical history, and current medications. After the portal has been completed, you are ready to schedule your initial consultation with our surgeon. Here are some general guidelines that most bariatric policies share, including Medicare guidelines. Bariatric surgery is indicated for those with a BMI of 35 or greater. If your BMI is between 35 to 39, you'll need to have an additional weight-related health condition, such as high blood pressure, sleep apnea, high cholesterol, GERD, or acid reflux. If your BMI is 40 or greater, an additional health condition is generally not required. Insurance companies want to ensure you are committed to adopting and maintaining a healthier lifestyle. In order to achieve this, your policy may require you to complete a period of a physician-directed weight loss attempt. We call them supervised diet visits. The length of time varies from policy to policy, but most require one documented weight loss attempt that is either three or six months in length. Nutrition evaluation. You'll meet with our program dietitian who will review your current dietary habits and typical daily intakes, and then recommend dietary changes to make before surgery and provide you with an overview of your specific caloric and macro needs. 
She will also go over what your diet changes are going to look like after surgery, the vitamins and supplements needed to stay in good health, and the different stages of diet you'll progress through after surgery. Our nutrition goals with surgery include improving your overall health through weight loss by improving existing comorbidities such as hypertension and diabetes, preventing any new comorbidities from developing, preventing nutrition deficiencies by ensuring adequate nutrition intakes and vitamin supplementation, maintaining your lean body mass by emphasizing protein, and ensuring adequate fluid intakes to avoid dehydration. Prior to surgery, what you can start working on is taking this time to develop healthy habits, including balanced meals, decreasing your portion sizes, increasing your exercise and your physical activity. Take this time to also eliminate those unhealthy habits, such as stop smoking and choosing food choices that are too high in calories or sugar or fat. Two weeks prior to surgery, you will be on a pre-op liquid diet. These include clear liquids like water, broth, and sugar-free popsicles, as well as protein shakes, which is the main source of your nutrition during this time period. The protein shakes help you maintain your lean body mass. They help with healing and they help keep you feeling full. The day after surgery, you will be on the clear liquid diet in the hospital. Again, water, broth, sugar-free popsicles. It's on stage two, you will be on a full liquid diet with protein shakes for two weeks. Stage three is a soft, blended, mashed foods diet for another two weeks. And then a month after surgery, you will begin stage four, where we add regular foods back in with an emphasis on high protein, low carb, and low fat intakes. After bariatric surgery, vitamin and mineral supplementation will be required. Your labs will be drawn before surgery to correct any deficiencies that may be present at that time. After surgery, you will need to start a vitamin regimen, including multivitamin, calcium, and other vitamin supplements. These will be reviewed with you during your dietitian appointment before surgery. Keys for long-term success after surgery include quality of your food choices. Ensure that you're getting protein, non-starchy vegetables, fruit, and limiting your starches with your meals. Portion sizes are also key after surgery. Remember, your pouch only holds about a half a cup of food. Lastly, maintaining regular physical activity will be key for losing weight and maintaining that weight loss long-term. Physical therapy evaluation. You'll spend a session with a physical therapist who will assess your current physical abilities, provide you with exercises you can start now, as well as help you regain and build your strength after surgery. Remember, cutting calories is not enough to achieve and maintain your weight loss goals. You must increase your physical activity gradually and within your physical limitations to enhance your weight loss success. Psychological evaluation. This is to ensure you understand the procedure, the risks and benefits, and the changes necessary to ensure a safe and successful recovery. We also want to ensure there are no underlying mental health conditions that may limit or hinder your ability to use your new tool. Sleep study. Sleep apnea is a serious health condition that may go undiagnosed for a period of time. If you have any symptoms of sleep apnea, we may require you to undergo a sleep study and show compliance with a CPAP or BiPAP prior to scheduling your surgery. Sleep apnea and or poor sleep habits has been linked to obesity, so if left untreated, can cause you to stall in weight loss. It's also a serious medical condition to take into consideration for anesthesia purposes. Should you have any health issues that you see a specialist for, the surgeon may request you to get clearance from those specialists prior to surgery. All bariatric patients can benefit significantly from weight loss surgery by reducing the risk of weight-related health conditions such as type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and chronic joint pain. Some patients are able to get off their insulin and other medications completely. Becoming more mobile and active is mentally and physically rewarding and can reduce the symptoms of depression and anxiety. Let's review the type of bariatric surgeries we perform here at Centerpoint Medical Center. 
it is important to understand there are different types of bariatric surgeries restrictive malabsorptive or a combination of the two restrictive procedures reduce the amount the stomach can hold malabsorptive procedures shorten the digestive tract and reduces the amount the calories and nutrients the body absorbs the best weight loss procedure for you depends on several factors including your weight personal preference and expectations your medical and surgical history and associated medical issues it is also important to understand when we talk about expected weight loss from bariatric surgeries we are talking about the excess body weight you can expect to lose for instance if your current weight is 300 pounds and your ideal body weight is 150 pounds your excess body weight is 150 pounds if we say you can expect to lose 50% of your excess body weight we are suggesting you can lose 50% of that 150 pounds of excess body weight which would equate to about 75 pounds all of our bariatric surgeries are performed using a minimally invasive approach and that includes laparoscopic approach and robotic approach five to six small incisions are made in the stomach instead of traditional open approach with one large incision there are several advantages of laparoscopic surgery including less pain reduced recovery and healing time and less visible scars the gastric sleeve is currently the most widely performed weight loss surgery throughout the united states It is a restrictive surgery in which approximately about 70 to 80% of the stomach is removed leaving a tube shaped stomach about the size of a medium banana. The gastric sleeve surgery reduces the amount of food you can consume at one time. It does not involve rerouting any part of the intestinal tract. The gastric sleeve results in fewer restrictions on the foods that patients can consume after surgery although the amount of food eaten is still considerably reduced. Some of the advantages of gastric sleeve include it preserves the natural function of the stomach, reduces the size of the stomach only, which reduces portion sizes, fewer restrictions on foods that patients can consume after surgery, ghrelin, a hunger stimulating hormone, is produced in the portion of the stomach that is permanently removed, reducing or eliminating the feeling of being hungry. Reduced risk of developing ulcers provides comparable weight loss to the gastric bypass of 60 to 65 percent of excess body weight can be revised to another bariatric surgery if needed. Some of the disadvantages of the gastric sleeve include long-term success is dependent on accepting new rules for eating and food selection. Weight loss is generally slower than with the gastric bypass. Complications from stomach stapling such as bleeding or leakage potential to develop acid reflux and it is not reversible as the excess portion of the stomach is removed. The Ruin Y gastric bypass reduces the size of the stomach to a small pouch which helps to cause a feeling of early fullness. It is the most common and successful type of malabsorption surgery performed. First A small egg-shaped stomach pouch is created to restrict food intake. Next, a Y-shaped section of the small intestine is created and attached to the pouch to allow food to bypass the lower stomach and the upper portion of the small intestine. This bypass reduces the amount of calories and nutrients the body absorbs. A major difference between the sleeve and the bypass is the creation of the gastric pouch. This requires bypassing the gastric outlet muscle called the pylorus which can lead to dumping syndrome. Dumping syndrome can be avoided by adopting eating habits that avoid sweets and fatty foods. Some of the advantages of gastric bypass are rapid initial weight loss a higher average total weight loss and better resolution of type 2 diabetes than the gastric sleeve 70 to 80% of the excess body weight is the average excess weight loss with the gastric bypass compared to 60 to 65% with the gastric sleeve some of the disadvantages of gastric bypass are long term success is dependent on accepting new rules for eating and food selection increased nausea and vomiting dumping syndrome due to bypassing the gastric outlet muscle the pylorus ulcers small bowel obstruction reduced absorption that may lead to vitamin deficiencies lifelong need to take vitamins and supplements the laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy with duodenal switch procedure also known as duodenal switch with bpdds or simply the switch combines restriction with malabsorption to give you a very powerful bariatric surgery procedure the primary mechanism of weight loss with duodenal switch is malabsorption the surgery is usually but not always reserved for obese patients with bmi in excess of 
The procedure begins with a gastric sleeve. Roughly 70 to 80% of the stomach is removed and a banana shaped stomach remains. The lower intestine is then divided even further downstream than the gastric bypass, bypassing approximately two thirds of the intestines. This leaves only a few feet of intestines where the food is met with digestive enzymes and digestion and absorption occur. The name duodenal switch comes from the fact the first part of the small intestine, the duodenum, is divided and reconnected to the lower part of the small intestine, that is the ileum. In recent years, this procedure has been modified to a single intestinal connection, which has greatly reduced the side effects of the traditional switch. And this is called a single anastomosis duodenal switch. Some of the advantages of duodenal switch include all of the advantages of gastric sleeve. Patients may expect to lose 85% of their excess body weight, ability to eat larger meals than with the gastric bypass. Some of the disadvantages of duodenal switch include long-term success is dependent on accepting new rules for eating and food selection, more frequent loose bowel movements, increased gas, higher probability of vitamin, mineral, and protein deficiencies requiring ongoing and frequent monitoring, the least invasive procedure we offer at Santa Point Medical Center is the Orbera gastric balloon. The FDA has approved the Orbera gastric balloon to be used in patients who have a BMI of 30 to 40. The balloon is inserted through an endoscopic procedure. A tube is inserted through your mouth into your stomach. The balloon is inflated with saline and is left in place for no more than six months. It is during this six month period where you learn to eat smaller portions and begin to embark on an exercise routine that will help sustain your weight loss after the balloon is removed. Patients who opt for gastric balloon are looking for a non-surgical, non-permanent weight loss tool. Gastric balloon patients can expect to lose between 20 to 40 pounds. The balloon is not absent from any risk. The balloon may become dislodged or may deflate, creating an obstruction. Nausea and vomiting may occur if patients do not tolerate the balloon. The gastric balloon is not covered by most insurance companies, but it is always best to call your insurance carrier to determine your specific benefits. As with all surgeries, including bariatric surgeries, there are risks involved, including blood clots, pneumonia, complications from anesthesia, blood loss, and even death. Specific risks associated with your medical history will be discussed with you at your initial consultation. One of the key disadvantages you heard with every bariatric surgery is long-term success is dependent on accepting new rules for eating and food selection. Remember, bariatric surgery is another tool to add to your weight loss tool belt. Combined with all of the other tools such as appropriate portion sizes, healthier food choices, changes to your eating styles and habits, and increased activity, Weight loss surgery can and will help you achieve your weight loss goals. Are you feeling overwhelmed yet? Don't worry. We recognize that this is a lot of information, but our team is here to help you. Every patient will receive an informational booklet at their initial surgical consultation. Be sure to read through your booklet thoroughly and write down any questions you may have. This informational booklet will have all of the information needed to help you be successful before, during, and after surgery. I decided to get bariatric surgery for numerous of reasons, uh, one being my health, um, and also I had at the time a seven-year-old son and standing on a deck and throwing a ball at him like a dog was not ideal. Uh, I wanted to actually be in the yard running around and playing with him and I can say I can do that now. So it makes it a lot easier on me and better on him as well. I was in a size 18, and uh, pushing 250 and I'm only five foot. So that's a lot of weight on these ankles. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I went from a size 18 and now I'm in a size six to a four, depending on where I go. Um, and it's been amazing. If you do decide to do this surgery, just know that you will go through some mental and physical changes. But if you stick with the program, take your meds and your vitamins and your supplements, um, the hard work will pay off. Here are some of the most common questions asked by our patients. Hopefully this will help answer some of yours, but if not, rest assured, 
We will answer all of your questions. What can I do now to help be more successful after surgery? We recognize you did not make this decision to have a major surgery to lose 10 or 15 pounds. You have an expectation, and rightfully so, to lose a significant amount of weight. You can start now, today, by making small changes in your eating habits, exercise habits, food choices, etc. Small changes made now will add up and have a big impact on your success. These are changes you'll need to make for the rest of your life. So use the time to work on you, starting right now. You are worth investing in yourself. Cut out sodas, sugary or carbonated drinks, sweet treats, eating out, and processed foods. Learn what it means to prepare meals, measure out portion sizes, thinking ahead and planning your meals, reading nutrition labels, keeping track of your fluid and protein intake. I promise you, the more you invest in yourself right now, the easier it will be after surgery. What appointments can I start on now? Prior to your initial surgical evaluation, you can schedule an appointment with your primary care provider and other healthcare specialists to discuss your desire to have weight loss surgery. It is important that each of your healthcare providers are aware of your intentions to have surgery and agree you are a good candidate to undergo bariatric surgery. We will need a letter of medical necessity from your primary care provider, so the sooner you have the discussion with him or her, the better. When should I start the supervised diet visits? Once we determine what is required, you can start scheduling those as soon as possible. We have a certified bariatrician who specializes in helping patients lose weight before surgery or in place of surgery. Or you can see your primary care provider if they are comfortable in documenting supervised weight loss visits. The visits must be every month for the determined period of time, and any missed or skipped appointments will only delay in completing your structured diet. Can I afford surgery? The affordability of the pre-surgical evaluations and surgery depends on your insurance coverage. Please be informed of any co-pays, co-insurance, deductibles, and out-of-pocket expenses by calling your insurance carrier. There will be lifelong vitamins and supplements required to ensure you stay healthy after surgery. Protein powders and drinks will also be required for two weeks prior to your surgery and approximately two weeks after. How long will I spend in the hospital? Gastric balloons are placed in our GI lab and our same-day procedures, meaning you'll go home that same day. Gastric sleeve patients typically spend overnight in the hospital and are discharged home the day after surgery. Gastric bypass and duodenal switch patients spend two to three days in the hospital. How long will I be off work? Generally speaking, for physically demanding jobs, six weeks, possibly more, depending on your recovery. For more desk-type jobs, two to four weeks. Keep in mind, there is a lifting restriction of 15 pounds for six weeks. You will also need time to get to know your new stomach and learn how to keep yourself hydrated and nourished throughout the day. During the first week or two, you will feel tired and run down with very little energy. This is expected as your body changes from using food as its energy source to using stored fat as its energy source. You will begin to regain energy and stamina in about one to two weeks. How much weight will I lose? This is a very common question. Remember, bariatric surgery is a tool to help you lose weight. It is to be used in conjunction with the other tools you will learn along the way. Making proper food choices, increasing your exercise, decreasing your portion sizes, and eliminating your snacking habits. The more committed you are to using those tools, the more weight you'll lose, the more motivation you'll maintain, and the more drastic your life will change for the better. How will I ever remember all of this information? Remember to use and read your informational booklet. That booklet is your guide. Everything from before surgery, what to expect while you're in the hospital, and how to care for yourself once you go home is all outlined in that booklet. You'll have a pre-op testing and education appointment approximately one week prior to your surgery where you'll have labs drawn, meet with our program pharmacist for a medication review, our program dietitian, and myself. Please keep this appointment in mind when scheduling time off with your employer. Bariatric surgery gives me an opportunity to form great patient relationships like no other surgical discipline can. Choosing weight loss surgery is a major life decision, which is why we have a team of experts to help you navigate this rewarding journey. At the end of the day, our patients come to us for three main reasons. One, to lose weight, to get healthier, 
and to change their lives. Now we look forward to partnering with you on your journey. You are truly taking an exciting step to a better life.